Dann let's start with the digital readiness check. Uh, welcome. I uh, um, I'm glad that you're interested in the digital readiness check. Uh, the digital readiness check. Okay, admittedly, it's the hundredth uh, uh, or a thousandth digital readiness check. Uh, doesn't sound uh, very promising, and every one of you who walks uh, through the exhibition halls, uh, the manufacturers, the dealers, they've all understood digitization is important. Digitization is uh, really very much up to date and there is hardly a presentation. If you look around over the last two or three years, there wasn't a, a no presentation that uh, uh, wa didn't want to do these disruptive uh, technologies and everything that can be digitized is being digitized and will be digitized. And of course, everybody under, uh, has understood, the retailer, the manufacturer, how important digitization has become in the meantime. Okay, we've understood digitization is crucial. Has really everybody understood this? Has everybody who walks in these uh, big halls uh, who want to do business, have they really grasp digitization. I'm a, a university a professor and I own an agency that is specialized in this field. We'll have to report that this is not true. If I look at my customers and my clients, uh, I realize that the situation really is quite different uh, from the ideal. If you look back a bit, uh, after all these years of digitization intentions, this digital disruption, change management, and changes, uh, if you are a bit critical and if you look at uh, the retail trade and uh, the manufacturers, uh, then we really haven't made all that much progress. I have a few figures. That, uh, uh, 2017 figures, 77 percent of retailers feel that they're lagging behind when it comes to digitization. So the industry feels that they're lagging behind very much and 63 percent of the SMEs, 63 percent of SMEs still don't have a digitization strategy, 63 percent, mind you. And uh, in stationary retailers, uh, not even every third has a home page of uh, his own. No home page. Uh, and even in standard uh, list like Google, Google Maps, uh, Yellow Pages, etc., or who supplies what, uh, only about every fourth, that is to say about 28 percent, uh, are still not uh, on these platforms. And that is, I mean, the least that you should do. And uh, in stationary retailers, stationary that is, uh, every third does not have a home page. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the current state of affairs. And if you look around uh, the cyber world that we've created uh, and all of the options it offers, then reality looks a bit bleak. Uh, every third does not even have a, a home page, I'd like to report. We talk about intelligent assistance. We talk about uh, augmented reality, and every third uh, doesn't even have a home page of his or her own. Also, mm, the activities in social networks are only used uh, by three of ten retailers, and the importance of search engines and alternative uh, searching systems, uh, apart from Google, has not been understood by many. The retail industry seems to be absolutely froze. I mean, they seem to be frightened of Amazon rather than do good business and uh, uh, looking into the options uh, uh, to even go through Amazon to do a business. Uh, and I think in the future, people should have second thoughts. Uh, you all know the books are by Quality Lands and in the quality land, in these are two uh, uh, books that I suggest you read, uh, everything is uh, portrayed in a somewhat different format. Amazon uh, will deliver with drones. Uh, Amazon 
uh, also gets uh, the retail industry moving and intelligent uh, assistance uh, help uh, people to place their orders. So the retail industry and the manufacturers, and this was really the underlying idea uh, for the digital readiness check. Uh, retailers and manufacturers have a hard time uh, to follow uh, the signs of the time. And if you don't follow uh, the signs of the time, will die over time. They will disappear. And I'm not trying to create any horror scenarios, uh, but I mean, if we're honest, uh, the situation is not all that uh, good. It's always the same arguments that we hear, the same kind of discussions. Well, things work so well. People say everything worked perfectly well. Look at manufacturers uh, who've offered sporting goods uh, or sports fashions. Uh, they were dominating the market at ISPO, and some of them have disappeared altogether because the young people don't find their products sexy. They don't find them interesting. The target group has uh, changed to completely in the meantime. They were market leaders, some of them, and everybody loved us. And the problem is, you know, everybody who is doing business knows that there is a need for change and that we must change. The big question is, however, where and how do we start? I mean, how do we tackle this? And digital readiness as a topic is a very difficult uh, topic. Everybody speaks about it. Everybody uh, talks about it. The politicians do. No company that wouldn't also look into this also at our universities. We talk about it a great deal. It's topic number one, digitization, digital transformation. And these are the buzzwords. But the big question is where and how do you start? And what's difficult about uh, digitization, of course, the term is really stupid, digitization. Now, uh, we all have to go through digital transformation. But I mean, it's not really what we're talking about. We're not really talking about uh, matters digital. Just think of the punched hole, uh, the punched cars. That was digitization also. The difference is just that uh, at present, a number of things coincide. We have the mega trends on the one uh, side, and then we have technologies uh, that work faster and faster. And so the companies uh, try to amend their business uh, uh, plans uh, to meet the needs of these innovative attitudes. And they wonder, what the hell should we digitize? And we've put this together in a list. Uh, if you launch such a process, uh, you only need eight steps, really. And the two central issues to be resolved uh, in uh, matters of digitization is what should we do? Most everybody does know. Everybody speaks about digitization. And then I ask what you do in your company. They say, well, yeah, um, yep, uh, we already have. Uh, yeah, we, we've ordered iPads. So, I mean, this is really a sad state of affairs. So what are we to do? Then the second important question is, how are we uh, going to do this inside our companies? The first issue is always, and that is a standard procedure, it's nothing new. What you need is a diagnosis to determine your current state of affairs, to find out what your company stands for right now. And this is why we develop this digital readiness check. And the second aspect is, I have to have an underlying idea on my current situation. I mean, where is our company to go? And where uh, are we from the vantage point of our clients? Or where haven't we got to? to uh, what is the company headed for? No matter if you're a manufacturer or a retailer, what do we achieve within two or three years' times? And then you compare the current situation and uh, the target situation. And only then can you launch and plan implementation measures. And then you can execute them. But of course, you should use a prototype first. I've got lots of uh, practical clients who think that digitization can be solved if they launch an e-commerce system, if they launch an online shop. But for many, the online shop might not be the appropriate solution. 
quite apart from the fact that uh, an online shop uh, is a costly venture. So for smaller dealers, uh, mm, uh, it should uh, be not to be afraid of Amazon, but to use the Amazon system and to do good business on this platform rather than to set up a huge uh, shop where, or a magenta online shop uh, because that will cost a lot of money and it also means a lot of work and at the end of the day you realize that people don't uh, buy our products online. You might know shit in, shit out, uh, only because you uh, do this online and on the basis of e-commerce. That doesn't mean that the customer will buy your products just because you sell them online. No. Uh, uh, try a small prototype at the beginning and only then really tackle the e-commerce options uh, and roll uh, out your plans and then do it after a pretest and uh, then measure afterwards. I know that lots of people don't like that uh, because it also sounds a bit like university un, uh, uh, in reality, but uh, you have to measure and even in practical situations, uh, evaluation is the name of the game. And then you have to think and you have to try to find out a point of departure. If you hadn't succeeded too well, what do we need to change? You have to ask yourself, uh, what can we do after the evaluation? What can we do to improve? And then, of course, uh, this uh, cycle repeats itself over and over. And we as agencies or ISPO, and this is why the readiness chip uh, that uh, ISPO is using, follows exactly that uh, sort of notion, as you might have heard before. It follows the scenario. That means uh, first to determine your current situation, and then you uh, use uh, ISPO's offers or those uh, who are offered uh, by the industry concern, and we'd like to lend you a helping hand. Now let's look at the digital readiness check. Let me say, for 25 years, I've been uh, operating an agency. We specialized in e-commerce at the beginning as a, we came from direct marketing. Now we are only working online. We develop a shop system. And in my second life, I'm a professor at the university for applied management and uh, I uh, am a marketing uh, psychologist, uh, and my brief is uh, to uh, help uh, the entrepreneurs of the future to handle digitization uh, as uh, best uh, they can. And then we realize that those responsible within a company have to be aware of where they can make changes, that is to say, where to turn and uh, uh, so as to be able to really have a successful switch over. Sounds trivial, but if you go to companies, uh, if you look around what's happening in practical reality, it's not as trivial as it sounds. My customers uh, that intend to start e-commerce, they say, oh, we do an online shop, and that will be our salvation. Well, an online shop is a program pretty fast uh, if you use uh, Magento or Shopware, but what the companies never thought about, who feeds the shop? Where do you get the, the images? How do you categorize your products? Uh, do you have a good economic system? What interfaces are there uh, between the products uh, and the shop system? And what people do we have who can do that? And then at the end of the day, you might have everything. Do we have data reliability? Do we have cybersecurity? And then no, uh, no customers show up. And now uh, you've uh, really uh, coughed up a lot of money and it went down the drain. So uh, what you need is uh, a uh, staff that, uh, uh, that uh, can cope with these things, that do online marketing, those who can cope with uh, search engines, etc. What I'm saying, if you uh, just change one minor thing, the whole setup, uh, the whole biotope, as I call it, will change. And understanding this, uh, I said we need a simple management system for practical application, and that was the work of the past two or three years at uh, the university where a simple, practicable system was to be created. And how did we proceed? Well, the current offer, and this is why I emphasized this at the beginning, of the digital readiness 
models or assessment models uh, is not a heterogeneous approach. There are thousands of consultancies, universities, software manufacturers. Everybody does their own little thing, and they all develop their own boxes. And we said, OK, we want to be theory guided. We don't want to launch anything in the marketplace, especially not as a university. And for this reason, seven current uh, readiness models uh, were checked. Um, they are a reality in both the science and practical applications. We worked through them, we translated them, we transferred them, and uh, we now uh, uh, coded them, actually, uh, which uh, de uh, serves the sophistication of already existing uh, systems. And then you have a status uh, that is based on categories. Uh, and then uh, I don't want to go into the technical ins and outs, uh, but then we did cluster cluster analyses, and uh, then we said, OK, on the basis of this expertise, we'll create our own digital readiness check, uh, which, and that was the challenge, uh, uh, whose target it is uh, to uh, reduce everything to the absolutely essential, because otherwise nobody would do it in practical reality. People say, oh, this is much too complex. Uh, uh, we have to launch this tomorrow, day after tomorrow, in two weeks or four weeks' time. We have to transform digitally. All of this is way too complex. And this is why our target was uh, to offer something simple. And this model as a structural frame uh, is to offer, uh, serve as a structural frame. And that shows us relevant uh, color-coded uh, aspects, uh, uh, design uh, fields, uh, uh, so as uh, uh, to cover all of the requirements you must meet. The first is the diagnosis of the current situation. That is to say, optimization steps uh, can only be introduced uh, if uh, uh, you know what you're doing and uh, what your situation is. And on the basis of uh, the digital readiness check, we would like to offer a tool to you that uh, allows you to do this in a very simple way. Uh, I'm still coughing. The speaker apologizes. OK, let me talk about the digital readiness uh, check. You go to the right and the left, uh, and uh, uh, there is real-time evaluation uh, possible. It consists of a number of uh, fields. It focuses on the client, the customer. The customer is the most important thing. The uh, customer is the boss, uh, both in B2B and also in B2C, the manufacturer and uh, the uh, retailers. Uh, the focus of all activities is the customer. And of course, we have to work uh, out uh, questions, psychological matters, what affects the attitude of the customer. The customer, uh, customer is always online. The customer is always mobile, moving about. We've heard that before. And intelligent assistance uh, will be used for buying. He or she are networked, so price comparison is possible. I mean, people are really fed up. People say uh, the ski boot costs 180. How much? Well, what? Yeah, it's a X Y Z boot. Uh, wait a minute. And well, what you charge? 280 euros. Now look, uh, 210 euros. Uh, this is uh, the price. Now, what do we do? Big question. So, the customer must be taken into account. Another aspect, this gray circle, that's the business model. Classical man management functions are included, and the underlying structure has not really changed. Uh, that is uh, what I always, what you've been doing all along, or should have done all along. However, there are requirements. Uh, the management crew and the top uh, personnel, however, has uh, changed to a certain extent. And these are simple questions. Questions with many people don't ask themselves. Uh, who are we when the customers look at us? So how do our customers see? Us. Who are we? Uh, in uh, what haven't we achieved in the eyes of our customers so far? And future strategies. Who do we want to be within two or three years' times? So unless you know this, uh, you don't have to worry about digital uh, transformation. So strategy. Uh, 
its content, not processes. The focus should be on where you want to be and how to get there. So ask yourself uh, the following. Do you offer extraordinary values to your customers? That is also what the check asks you. Is your point of departure different from your competitor? Have you selected appropriate trade-offs? Is what you're doing uh, compatible with the company structure? And are your measures uh, uh, um, durable? And then, of course, we look at the macro environment. That is to say, where our company is embedded, pest analysis, mega trends, and corporate social social responsibility. There are lots of stands that have already picked up these issues. And then the next aspects, three areas of action, and I'm almost finished. We have three areas of action which we can go through if you want to. First, the green area, that is the um, offer of values and presentation. That includes central issues, including the customer's wishes. The blue context is the area of action encompassing infrastructure and organizations, the very foundation. Have, uh, the, do you have people on board who help you to achieve this, uh, to achieve this transformation? They are crucial for uh, success. And the third area is uh, the uh, client, uh, the persons, and the customer experience, both online and offline target experience. Uh, uh, that is what your customers should experience. You have to know about the appropriate touch points, and you also have a, to have a, a clear understanding of your target group. Uh, and now mm, I'm uh, almost finished. Uh, um, diagnose uh, so, uh, current situation, concept, uh, current situation, and comparison. We talked about the diagnosis. Well, you can do your diagnosis right here. And uh, I think uh, uh, it's great uh, that the manufacturers of the sports uh, goods and retailers have agreed this iPads which are installed. You can do this test. I'll show you once again in real time. So you fill it in. Might take eight or nine minutes or ten minutes if you're a bit slow. You can also use your mobiles to do that. And in real time, you uh, get the solution via email. Not the solution, but you get a definition of your current situation that covers the first item, then you know where you are, and then you can, once you've got uh, this uh, free um, evaluation, it's free, mind you, once you've got this ev evaluation, you do have a kind of diagnosis, and then uh, you can determine your, uh, a, a, your concept uh, situation, then you planning and intervention, then uh, also produce a prototype, uh, go through the implementation, and uh, we and ISPO will help help you in all of these stages. The university will offer its services. Uh, and uh, if universities do that, it's uh, cheaper. People don't want to spend money. And of course, ISPO is also a very helpful partner here. Thank you very much. I didn't take longer than 22 minutes. Are there any questions? Yes, please. Over to you. And you can also do that check uh, at home. but. Uh, do it here, and uh, then it takes only a couple of minutes, and chuck a luck. There you are. It's the first step taking you into the future. Are there questions? Yes, please. And once again, I mean, in the previous presentations, you might have heard, why does ISPO offer this? Uh, 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 ISPO digitized us this for this reason. They want to know where the retail industry is, uh, uh, the manufacturers, what kind of problems do they have in summer mm, uh, during ISPO. They will be able to offer very precisely determined uh, solutions. Uh, and because uh, without analysis, without diagnosis, a company and ISPO just cannot help you. I mean, ISPO can not uh, be a successful partner unless they offer all of these options. Uh, because first of all, of course, you have to know what you need, what uh, do uh, ISPO's clients wish. And it's my suggestion you don't always have to have the craziest <coughs> technical augmented reality model um, or project. You know, if you're a retailer, if orders, uh, I mean, you still receive a fax orders and an iPad is the big revolution. Well, look at uh, your own situation and just get going, no matter where. I mean, you might be in for a bloody nose, uh, but uh, you will not be able to avoid or evade digitization. Okay, questions? 
24 minutes and 28 seconds was doing pretty good. Okay, we've got half a minute left before I have to leave. Questions? No, no questions. Right. Okay, I'd like to thank you very much for so many of you listening. To me, this is a pretty interesting topic. It should interest everybody, but of course, nobody really seems to be interested. Only once they drive their crash their cars, they say, okay, that's the end of uh, the line. Well, then it might really be the end of the line for you. Thanks for listening. I wish you a very interesting stay here at the trade show. Thank you very much indeed.